this one. This is just a little, a little, let me get it the right way. Um, a little, this is one of the roses I'm going to do for you today, but I wanted to do it to practice it so that when I come up here to do this painting for you, that it doesn't come out crummy. <laughs> so I, I painted it just to make sure that it uh, I could still do it. You never know this stuff leaves you. And uh, I didn't want to come up here and do a crummy rose for you and then have you go, oh, this guy's known for rose painting. And hey, Harry, look at this painting this guy did of this rose. It's terrible. And he's supposed to be a rose painter? Give me a break. <laughs> Brenna says it's the volume's low on a cell phone, so maybe if some people are watching it on cell phones, it's not coming through good. Judy Fernandez and Carson and Reno also said it was low, but other people are saying no. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's I don't all, know if they're it's, working it's, on a cell uh, phone and it's low. I don't know. Brenna I've said, got, let me, oh, it's plugged in. Don't know. Anyway. Well, some people can hear. Yeah. Now, I've got a canvas. Oh, the original over here is an 18 by 24. Oh, look at that. Look at the red pop. Remember, I'm not going to do the bird. That's gonna, I'm going to let this the, the painting here dry, and then on another show, I'll put the bird in for you. Okay, now, this is a, the uh, original is an 1824. This is a 16 by 20. I have linseed oil on here. If you don't know it, but it's there just to kind of wet it down, let the uh, paint flow. Jonathan Corver's watching. Corey Kahanik. Corey, we'll be seeing Jonathan. you. Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan Corver. Here's my palette. I want you to see something. Notice how my palette looks like the painting. That, that, you see, you have to have the colors on your palette if you're going to paint. Otherwise, it won't be there. Let's name these colors off for you. We have a burnt sienna. We have sap green. Uh, that's a little more sap. Thale yellow green. This is a new color up here. It's called green gold by uh, Grumbacher. It looks like that other green that we use. I forgot the name of it. Chromium oxide, yeah. a little bit, it's more gold. Yeah. We have black, very important. And I pre-mixed it here, and you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, I've taken black and white, made it gray, and I put a little a thalo red rose in it. Yellow ochre. Yellow. Think yellow. I think this is magenta. This is left over from Catherine painting yesterday. Magenta. Cad yellow medium, orange, alizarin, crimson, very important color. Cad red pale and cad red medium. Now you can see how the medium is much redder. The cad red pale has or more. Cad red light, it, they'll call it too. Orange. Thaler red rose and purple. It's got that crazy name. Dioxazine. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Dioxazine. Dioxazine. Okay, let's just call it purple. Yeah. And I've mixed some white with it so it comes on down. Uh, cerulean blue with some white. Uh, titanium white. Okie dokie. Well, you, you get the idea. Now, what we're going to do is take, this is about a half inch brush. It's a synthetic and this is oh, my brush. <laughs> And we're going to take some ochre. And I'm just, my medium is just plain turp. And I'm going to, Kathy uses a different, she uses a turp plus linseed, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So either way. Now, we have to find where the roses are before we get into all this wonderful background stuff. And I don't make circles, but I'm just going to get really nervous and just kind of find where that rose is going to be. So there's going to be a rose there. This is yellow ochre. We have sort of a side view, which is kind of cool. A little different. 
And notice how I twist and turn that brush. Let the brush work for you. I'm going to be going through a lot of stuff on here to show you. Because I've been watching a lot of videos that people have. And you're not, you're working, you're not working right. You're not letting the brush work for you. I'm going to show you what to do there. We have buds coming up. Okay, now, this is so we don't get our nice, lush, dark color. Let me look at that painting again. I, I forgot to tell you the composition is running from the center up. We have white on each side. This is so cool because the white is neutral. So with, when you have white on the sides, it punches, it emphasizes the darks and the reds. Because your eye won't go out here. Your, notice, your eye stays right in here. You can't, you'll go out here, but you'll come right back to this. Your eye will always go to the darkest value in the painting. Kaboom. Or it'll also go to the lightest value. Kaboom. Oh, oh, look at the red. Bam. That's passion, guys. Passion. Look at the shot in there. People go, well, what is that? It's nothing but color. It doesn't have to be a leaf. It doesn't have to be a bud. It doesn't have to be anything. It's just color just simply because it's beautiful by itself. It doesn't need any anything. Okay. Say hello to your daughter, Amber. Amber! We're going to see you... Uh, Pretty soon. Amber is my daughter. She's uh, going to be flying in here soon to see us. See and you know. You're in your studio maybe we you. can get together and go see that guitar player she likes mm. so much. What's yeah. his name? Esteban. Esteban. Yeah. We'll take you to see Esteban. Now, we're going to start in with our darks. We have sap green. Beautiful dark. I've been using that green forever. <laughs> We're going to take that color. Maybe I'll put a little crimson with it. Oh, we're going to play. Look at that. Now, <laughs> notice I'm not just going like this. Or like this. That's boring. But the brush is dancing. All, it's just twisting and turning and having some fun. Let the brush work. Listen to the, listen to the easel and saying, I love you, I love you. Get it on there. Boy, look at that. Look at that. Yes, it looks sketch, sketchy. Yes, it looks messy. It's supposed to. Look at that. This way. That way. Now I tell folks when they're working just to simplify the stroke to use overlapping X's, but even that can get a little tight. So I'm just doing it. Sometimes it's the chisel, sometimes it's the edge. Close your eyes and do it. <laughs> I think if we try to make everything too simple, I'm going to take a large brush with some chirp and I'm going to put it on there. And let her run. Let's get some more. This now, this isn't going to match the painting I'm doing. Because who wants to do it again? I already did it once. And you don't, you can't do it again anyway. I put a little sienna in there. Sienna. Love that color. Blue. I don't have that down here, but let's put some in. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We'll put it on and let it run. Now it runs. This runny stuff isn't for everybody. A lot of people say, hey, I don't like that runny stuff. My little two-year-old could do that. So it's not for everybody. That's okay. You don't have to do this. But why not? Look at how I'm thinning the paint out. So when it comes to the size, it's not dark where the eye will just run right off the canvas. Look at that. I'm going to take some of that. Boom, boom, boom. Do it. Do it. 
do it. Have some fun with it. Oh, look at that peat going in there. Well, it's kind of a reddish color, which kind of complements your green. A little more dark in here. Now we want to get our, our background going pretty good before we jump into the roses. Look at it run. And don't get in there and mess with it. Just let it do its thing. Thalo red, uh, what is that? Thalo red, yellow, thalo yellow green. green. Oh, I don't even know the names of the flowers or colors. Well, you know, I have dyslexia. Yes. I know. So did Einstein. He had the same thing. And it's not a bad thing. It just means you're a little heavier on the creative side than anything. And uh, people think you're stupid. <laughs> hey, that guy's stupid. Look, look at that. Now, this is mainly just uh, turk. Oh, honey. Oh, look at that. Run over the road. See if I can. I'm going to bring that sienna down here more. Good quiet while I'm doing stuff. Now it's just you and the painting. You and the painting. Nothing else exists. That's why everybody loves to paint. Kathy says painting is the only way you can run away without leaving home. <laughs> That's true. Let's take a little white and stick it there. White! Ugh, look how I pull it through. Yes. People just have a devil of a time doing this stuff. Good abstract painting is the foundation of everything. All painting starts with an abstract. Peggy Cook. Who? Peggy Cook. Peggy! Be seeing you pretty soon. Sometimes you can just take turp and just hit it, 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 hit it. Is this fun? Look at that. Look at it happen. This is more, this abstract stuff I'm showing you. You go into your fine art galleries, and this is what you're going to find. My daughter Heather San Diego paints horses. Very, very successful. Thousands of dollars. She shows her work at the uh, lobby of the Hilton Hotel. And of course, these high rollers stay there that are at the racetrack. And she does. She's the resident uh, Delmar racetrack painter. Yeah, the resident Delmar racetrack. racetrack painter. Good for her. And she earned it. Didn't just happen, good. Yes. Yes, are we uh, looking? Oh, I got a squeaky chair. <laughs> Reminds me. And I'll put it over here. Now, you want to keep this fresh look. That means you don't get in and with a blending brush and mess with it. Put it on. Wipe your brush. Pick up some turf. And you need to try this. A little red in there. Oh, look at the red go in. Look at Can you see it? Everybody that's watching, if you're not already doing this kind of painting, this background, you can do this stuff. Somebody out there is going, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's okay. Stuff for everybody. That's all right. Oh, 
Oh, let it go. Let it rip. My early days of painting, I didn't do backgrounds like this. I was playing it safe back in the 70s. Yeah. You get no place playing it safe. Look at the. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody help me. Oh, I went out into my uh, rose garden. Well, it's, there's about three inches of snow out there, and I had to knock the snow off, but I brought these leaves in. Look at that. You see these? You see how you have to work for nature? Whenever I'm doing a rose painting, I always go out and find leaves and buds. You see how that will set in there? Let me show you. I'm going to turn the camera. I want to show you something. Look at how these, can you see the color? How close the color here is to this. Because I went out and worked from the real thing. You can't make this up. You have to work from nature. This is the big turn on. I couldn't do paintings like this without bringing leaves in. This was painted, these roses are from my rose garden. I couldn't do this stuff. If you just paint from what you know, which isn't that much, then you, this, this isn't my saying, <laughs> then you, it's a saying that you have an idiot for a teacher because you're not learning anything. You only learn when you bring stuff in like this and you look at it and say, oh, look at the color, look at this, look at the, Look at the beautiful highlights. Can you see? Let me get that up. Look at that. You see it? You can't make that up. You have to have... <laughs> yeah, God <laughs> help you out here. Look at the colors. Look at the blue-greens and the cools and the warm. It's all, all that stuff is right in there. But nobody sees. Nobody wants to do that. There's a certain segment, I know. They just want to do simple stuff. That's okay. Maybe if that's what you want, that's fine. I don't want to force my views on you. If that's what's working for you and you're happy doing that, that's all that matters. It's a little red up in here. But I just don't understand why people don't do more of this. Or at least give it a shot. Give it a try. I'm going to put my little brush up here. Oh, see the little one, I have a little more control over things. And then I'm also, oh, oh, a little more up here. You see that happening? You see it running? This, I think, is what painting is all about. It's this. This stuff. It sets you apart from everybody that's doing this. Here's a flower. Here's a leaf. Here's this. Here's that. I have my paintings in a fine art gallery here in the good old Sedona. If I just went in there with simple little stuff, here's a, they would take it. They would kick me out the door. <laughs> and any time I do paintings with all this well, drippies and abstract stuff, it's always the one that sells. And I do them with uh, birds and and herons and all kinds. Of, where, by the way, we're gonna. I'll show you some paintings in a bit that on some other DVDs uh, that will be, Catherine and I will be making uh, of what the subject matter looks like. I might not like this one. It might be a little strong. Take your towel and knock it down a little bit. Whoa. 
some stems going in. Yeah. See, as soon as you start putting stems in, all this abstract stuff takes its place in the background. Yet, I wish I had started doing this years ago. But things don't always. Well, it, it seems like, I don't know, later in life you start to find out just what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So there's a couple leaves coming out. Just added a couple. Wiggle, wiggle leaves. No. <laughs> I can't say wiggle, wiggle anymore. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I started doing these way back when. Anyway, that. Just adding a little simple leaves. You can see how it works with all that abstract stuff. Stems, if you look at stems, rose stems especially, they have a little pink, pink. Oh, Jackie just added stuff. How did you do that? You just put it in? <laughs> I'm typing in things. Really? You're amazing. Much Besides being so beautiful, mm -hmm. oh, yes, stem coming down, yes, stems are never straight, yeah, because it's wet down here from all the drippies, everything is just flowing along, oh, a couple of leaves down here. Oh, there's a little purple in it. Cool. Sack green. And when you're working from real things, real leaves, you'll see things happening. You, one person as a painter, you, you can't, you can't know everything. You have to have help. And nature does that for you. I'm wiping out just some of this area in here. Sometimes you can pull some of the color in just a little. Oh, not that much. <laughs> oh, not that much. Yeah. What else do we have? Let me get a little, before we get into those roses. I have paintings where I've done, even though I've been painting roses for years. Since the 60s. Since the 60s. 60s. the si 60s? Since the 60s. Oh, am I that old? Your style of since the 60s. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Well, I'm old. Painting roses. <laughs> oh, yes. Painting roses. And poppies. And I still, from time to time, will put a rose in. It'll just be crummy. It just does not turn out. You try to fix it and it gets worse and worse and worse. Worse. Look at that. Subtle tone. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. I'm starting to like this better than the other one. Oh, here's something else you can do. I'm going to take a fan brush. 
pick up some white and turp very soupy i'm going to take it up here and put that in there oh <laughs> too much i like to tell people you did that now what that'll what'll happen because you'll see me on many of my paintings i put these little orbs in and so the little box I just put in will make sense. I still don't like it. <laughs> oh, yes. You see, this adds energy. They're orbs. They actually do exist. Look it up. How do you spell it? O-R-B-S? Mm -hmm. uh, Google orbs. You can actually photograph them. You see it happening. Look at this. That's your passion. Any, anybody have any questions? No. No questions. No questions because nobody's watching. Yeah, they are. They're not there. They just don't like it. <laughs> Oh, that, that makes noise. Paper towels. You need paper towels, guys. We're going to jump in and do a rose here. Do a rose. Now, it's the laying that's important. Let me get in a little closer. It's how you lay it in. Melzy, I see you watching out there. Melzy Oli. Oh. Billy Shoemate? Shoemate. We're just, we're watching, we're just mesmerized. <laughs> I'm here, Gladys France, me too. Joanne Nagy, I'm loving it so far. Well, yeah, wait until I get into it. <laughs> Mary Jane McCoy, I love you guys. I have a monitor, I can see what's coming in if I can, but I can't paint and look at it at the same time. Okay, we're gonna do this rose. It's the lay-in that's important, and it's important to just paint a feeling of the flower and not every single petal. Let me show you how that works. Let, it's, uh, we're gonna take our gray, that's our black and white, makes a gray, put a little pink with it, and we're gonna stick that on here. Now this is a neutral color, maybe I'll get a little more pink and gray going there. Now when I come out, I'm going to come out with edges of petals creeping out into the dark. Pick up the dark and pull it in. Pick up the dark and pull it in. Whoa! That's okay. Let's let it in there. If it gets too dark on your land, just get rid of it. Sometimes. <laughs> now up here, I'm going to thin the paint out because this is going to be where the lights are. Don't worry about the dark getting in there, I know. You can always push it out of the way. Out of the way. But you need some of the background in there. Notice the finger. You're going to see me using my finger a lot in the paint. Oh, sweat a little stuff. All right, there's your base cook top. A little bit of everything in there. Let's take a little crimson, very dry, and put that in the middle. This is what people don't do. That's crimson. That is yellow. This is orange. <laughs> Let's pull it together. Look at the, now, here's the important thing. You see the brush? You see how I twist? You see how I'm turning it? So what, I don't just go in and paint it straight out, but I'm gonna come in with my brush twisting. Why do that? Because it gives me all this little stuff in there that you don't, you could paint it, I suppose, but it would come out as loose and as fresh. 
Put the brick next. This is important again. Yellow. I'm putting more yellow. Look at the brick. Look at it jump. This is so important to do. Nobody does it. I'm going to take more pink before I pick. Before you pick petals out, you have to have your underpainting in there. Look at that going in. It's going to come down. I'm going to take some black and white, make a gray. Because I want this dark in here, it's going to emphasize. Look at that. When I was painting in here, I picked up crimson and it got in there. That's fine. Don't worry about it. This is the dark we want. It's the value study, too. Study values. Okay. Now you see what we have. Let's take a minute and analyze what we have. We have crimson, we have yellow, we have orange, and then we went into the gray tone, which has a little pink and whatever in there. Notice its value. It's about a number three on the scale. Yeah. Now when light comes in, light comes in, it diffuses the middle tone or the shadow. It diffuses it. So it's not as dark as it is now. Light cancels out shadow almost. Now watch how this happens. It's not magic. Magic this, magic that. I remember, I remember back in the 70s when I was first with a large company out there. It was different then. It, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. Uh, everything was magic this and magic that or whatever. And I, what kind of paint did I have? I had uh, floral, floral, oh, floral colors. Floral and, paint. It was yeah. called floral paint. <laughs> yeah. Crazy stuff. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of what Robert it's and all niece about. from Florida. Who? Vivian Bowman. Vivian. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Haven't seen them in a long time. Are you still time. alive? Yes. <laughs> See them on Facebook all the time. Now, let's take our white. Very dry. You paint the dry on top of the wet, not the other way. Let's get it in there. Now, watch me. Put the brush down. Watch me wiggle and come to a little point. Now, what I'm after is this contrast. Let's put another one in. This way, this way. Notice how it's starting, how I'm wiggling the brush. Some Patty uh, chats says, can you get more volume? Uh, no, we can't. No. Um, she can barely hear. No. It's different on different people's devices. Yeah. Yep. We can't do anything on this end. Coming around. The brush is still dancing. Dancing. Coming in around. Less pressure now, which puts less paint on the canvas. It comes around. Less pressure back here, guys. Here, we'll just kind of, kind of get the feeling that there's petals back here. Maybe just the side of the brush. This is probably the toughest area back in here. And you, but what you don't want to do is go in and say, here's a petal, there's a petal. Then you lose the softness. You lose that, that loving feeling. Petal here. Watch me put the brush and just come down and come to a point. But when I did that, I could paint back into it and make it look more like a petal. So you don't want to do too much of that. You see how I wiggle that brush? What we're doing is giving the illusion of petals way in the back. Just an illusion. Yeah. 
<laughs> it ain't easy. It's not easy. You know anything worthwhile? Isn't easy. Oh yeah. You can you can paint flowers where here's a petal, there's a petal. And what happens? Uh, you melt into the gray area, into where everybody is. I think it's maybe because they just don't want to work that hard. If you're a teacher out there and you and you're trying to teach stuff, don't make the mistake of painting down to your students. If you do that, eventually they'll find somebody else. Paint up, they'll, they'll come up to it and they'll appreciate it. Yeah. Look at that. Sometimes it's just an edge showing. Look at, see how I'm wiggling that? Coming down to the bottom, we might show another petal. <laughs> okay, well, back in the 70s, it was uh, painting wholesale for a company called Aaron Brothers in Los Angeles. And they would buy my paintings and pay me so much for a 1620 and so much for an 1824. I was so fortunate, so lucky to have the owner, Al Aaron, would in the beginning make out a shopping list of the sizes and give it to me. And he, he would say sometimes, well, that'll feed the family for a while. Yep. 15 years I worked for Aaron Brothers painting wholesale. Amber, you're out there. My daughter, Amber. She remembers going into Los Angeles in the back of the car where uh, I would take my paintings in, but I wouldn't let them out of the car because it was L.A. And, you know, it's not that. This started in the late 60s. It started in the late 60s when you were working for Aaron Brothers. Really? And you worked for them for 15 years. Yeah. Long time. But yeah, uh, and, but you know, the thing is, when I was working for him, I always tried to do the best I could. But it was, I was getting paid to learn. Yes. How, how, how lucky is that? Getting paid to learn. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I remember taking my kids in the back seat into LA and telling them, now don't you get out of the car. <laughs> Amber remembers. Now I put a touch of yellow with the white, just a touch, and I'm really piling it in. Remember, I said, light gets rid of shadows. But sometimes you have to put shadows back in, like that. Just very subtle. Okay, I'm gonna take, I see this guy needs more pink. He needs more pink back here. In the back, there's less detail. Yeah, if you're late joining, this will be up on our Facebook page, so you'll see it all from the beginning. Sometimes your finger works better than anything in there. This is where you're going to spend time picking at it. 
until you get the feeling you want. Some places you'll feel, hmm, oh, some, oh, okay. Oh, you put that up, paintings mm -hmm. for sale on eBay. Your older ones from 60s and 70s. Yeah. Look at the little catch lights going in. Now we're getting the feeling we want. Sometimes it's, it's just a stroke. What we're doing is we're painting music. We're painting music. You have high notes, high notes, and you have the low notes. And, and notes in between. The notes that kind of hang up there. They're just there. <laughs> oh well. Now you know why most painters are a little nuts. I think you have to be a little crazy to do this. Boom. Whoa. Didn't boom, boom. Sometimes you boom and it, it doesn't boom. It just sort of sits there. Oh, I want some phthalo, yellow, green, and some yellow, because I got a feeling it wants something. It blue, it wants something in there. Need some close-ups of the rose while you are painting. Oh. Uh, if I you get wish. too close with the camera, it goes out of focus. Well, I can get it in there a little close. That's about as close as I can get, guys. It goes out of focus otherwise. No, yeah, it's okay. Because right now the camera is right on me in here. Hmm. Hmm. Let's play a little on those edges, those petal edges. Ugh. Whoa, what is that? Work it in, work it in, work it in. Sometimes. This, by the way, was our Chicago Peace Rose. Is that what that is? Chicago piece. It's ivory. It's a little yellow and then pink on the edges. Pale pink on the edges. Like that. 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 Ah. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Susan Jenkins is watching. Susan. Hi, Susan. Susan, how you doing? I heard you're... Uh, where was she working? At the... In Hemet at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, you guys. Out. If you live in Hemet, California... Susan is painting, uh, teaching at Hobby Lobby. If you're not Susan, let me know, but I think you are. Mm -hmm. And she does some really cool stuff. So you need to get in there, take some classes. Look at that go. I don't usually use the blender, or maybe I'll just hit that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, you see the color bursting. Bam! Yes. You know, I'd rather see you paint a really bad loose rose than a halfway decent tight one. Why is that? The, the halfway decent tight one, people will go, gee, I like that better. But you see, we're learning. We're on this road of learning. And, if, and, and when you start painting loose and you throw in a little bit like we're doing of tightness, you end up with such a beautiful soft flower that resonates with the people. They love that stuff. They love it. Do it. Don't run with the crowd. And again, you painters out there that are teaching, don't just paint this simple stuff. God. 
I'm gonna throw more. <laughs> That sometimes, as you go along with your painting, you're going to go back in and hit some of this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see it happening? Yeah, I see it, but I can't do it. I know you can't. I know you can't do it. You can't do it because you haven't tried. You haven't started these steps that lead up to this. <laughs> blue! Bam! Look at, see, can you look at that color? Just look at blue. Okay, it's not a leaf. It's not anything. It's just color. But what, the way it plays with, with the, the rose, the way it plays with the green, it's beautiful. And we're going to take that color that's simply there because it's beautiful and work it all oh, yet yeah. and just worked it in. So it's just a peak of a, a color peeking out and then maybe we'll take a stem oh, and come over which sets the color back. Hmm. <laughs> Let's take some of that green gold by Grumbacher. Golly, what's that going to do? There's a leaf there. Maybe we'll put a larger leaf in. Yeah. Just a large leaf, but it, it has too much green. I liked it before you put that leaf in. Play. Push that brush around, guys. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to take some green and sienna. Another leaf. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I'm going to remember the leaves that I brought in from the rose garden. Remember? And you can bring them in and kind of see where you might like them. I'm going to put in Sienna. Just the shape of a leaf. And don't make them all the same. Let's take some phthalo yellow green right on top of the sienna. Let it mix in. Hmm. <laughs> That's there to back up that rose to help bring it out. Maybe we'll take. Is that some. another rose up top there? That small rose, that white. Yeah, it's in here. Part of a rose up yeah. on top above those dark green leaves. No. Above those green leaves, that white. Yeah, right in here. Well, isn't that? supposed to be part of a rose. Yeah. And the hummingbird is going into a red rose. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if you noticed that. Well, I'm not completely <laughs> senile. <laughs> so, uh, I could be. My dyslexia kicks in. Yeah. I remember. In the early days, I was really socially challenged.
But that was my dyslexia. Oh, look at this, how I'm bringing some petals out, which sets those leaves back. It's no biggie, it's just, you guys, just do it. There's a little pink going in, but notice I, I, how I'm jumping around. So again, it's important how you apply your paint. We have a little white one back there. We're going to take our black and white. Maybe stick a little pink in it. Stick it right in there. The value of this little guy in the back right now is dark. So that we can take our white into that really thick and give the illusion that there's another rose back there. And it's just kind of there, guys. Finger, finger, finger. Susan that uh, will be is painting in uh, Hemet at the uh, Susan Jenkins. Susan Jenkins. She's my uh, first wife. Does some roses and uh, a lot of florals, a lot of florals, nice florals, different style. It's a different style, but she does some really cool stuff that is really impressionistic and loose and free. And her colors are beautiful. So guys, if you live near Hemet, or uh, Susan, if you have a website, why don't you uh, just email it to us? We'd be glad to tell the folks where they can find some stuff, your stuff. Now there's that rose. Can you see it? It says rose. Or have I completely flipped out up here? And there's a stem running through it. Oh, my hand might be in the way. But you see, when you put stems coming in, it adds more of a natural feel to your flower. Yes. Let's do that next one. Ooh, well, we're doing pretty good, only a little less than an hour. Thank you, time. Yeah, let's go. That's a little round looking. It should be more oval. So I'm going to come in and take some of this out and put some of that sap green back in here. Yeah. How are you painting the negative, how to paint the negative space? You can cut in to that other full rose if you want you know, to show Here? how to paint the full rose you already did. Yeah. About painting the negative space around it to reshape some petals uh, once in a while to show them how to do that. Yeah, if you get messed up, you don't have to accept it. Oh, Joan Westmoreland. Hi, Joan. Joan! We want to come see your play. We want to come see the pl her play that she's... I oh, yeah. This uh, weekend, she, i got to buy tickets. Joan is an actress and uh, does acting in some plays. What was that one we went to see? Steel Magnolias. Yeah, but she wasn't in that. that day. Yes, she was. Oh, she was. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joan. That's Joan right. Westmoreland. Yes. Yowie. She's an yes. actress here in Sedona. In yes, she played that uh, role. What, what role was did she play? Quiza. Quiza. Shirley oh. McLean role. Yeah. The best role of the whole movie. Yeah. But yeah, she was good. This flower is on the side. It's more the side view. Let's take a look at the original over here. There it is. 
If you can see, you see the gray in here? And how the light hits? Okay, let's see what we can do. Right there. Before we do that guy, I see this one. You see these petals, how it's one, two, how it looks like they're all lined up. I want to pull, when that happens, pull two, the shapes together more. Yeah, so that it. Uh, I would have some red in there too above that bottom rose. See the rose, the red above here? Right there. Yeah, see the red in there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can get it over the green. Yeah. Red. Boom. <laughs> now. You see how I put that on? I just laid it in. More. Now I'm going to go around and tickle and twist and turn. And look how it just sits in there. It kind of looks like a bud in there. See, this is how things happen. That looks like a bud. Just made it into a bud. <laughs> Crazy. That's how this kind of work happens. It, things happen. It's not all planned. That's the beauty of it. If I sat down to do a painting and I knew exactly how the background's going to work, it would be boring. Who wants to spend the rest of their life just doing predictable stuff? That's why I love these paintings. They're not all the same. You see how I put that brush down? Let's do another one. Down. Now, if you were doing a wiggle wiggle, you would just down and out, okay? Years ago, I, I did that. But what you can do is go down, stay there, and wiggle and pull, and then come out. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, so you have that with the little guys that adds interest to your painting. Mm -hmm. Another one here. Yes. Getting a little jazzy with those leaves over there. Yowie. Let's take our gray, black and white. Lynn Murray, love the background. Thank you. Now it's time you did one. We have private classes in our studio here, as many of you know, four or five students. And they are doing stuff like this, like crazy when they come in here. I want to do those backgrounds. Okay, let's do it. Here's that gray going in. Do it. Come on out. Bring it on in. Bring it to me, honey. Bring it to me. Look at how dark that is. Hi from Northern Michigan, Wendy. Now, okay, that's our dark. That's about a three or four value. We're gonna take our white. White is hitting on the top. So we're gonna get that in there. Notice the brush twisting and turning. We're going to get a little more white, maybe a touch of pink. So you, you, the lay-in is important. There's white with a little pink. I'm not picking petals yet. But I want the separation between the light and the middle tone. You see how I'm hitting that? Getting these little nuances, little things happening. You see it? Yes. I'm going to simplify this guy. As your painting progresses, you'll always go, keep going back to uh, what you did before. Fixing it. A painting is never finished. It simply stops 
at a good place. That's nothing I came up with, that saying. It's, who knows who said it? You have to be passionate about your, your painting. Paint till you drop. Paint to please yourself. Don't paint to please anybody. People are fickle, you know that. Love you one minute and hate you the next. Now I'm using uh, titanium white. This one happens to be a Grumbacher. I'm reaching down. You don't see me, but I'm putting more paint out. Yeah. White. Phthalo Red Rose. And I'm just going to plunk a little of this around. No petals yet. White, pure white. Maybe now we say, here's a petal. We want just the illusion of petals. This is where having the real flower to look at really helps. Now this paint I'm putting on is very dry. Don't even think about putting it on wet. It won't work. Picking petals. Petal, 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 petal. But the values in here are very close. So you get a feeling of a lot of, lot of petals. At a, but at the same time, a softness. I'm going to take that gray. Black and white. Make a gray. I'm going to bring a petal up and down. Very soft, very light touch. This gray coming up to that light. Chuck. Chuck. Masses in Reno. Our Chuck. From Reno. How you doing, Chuck? And did I tell you, Gail, my colleague was watching? Gail. When are you coming out? Nick Hankins is watching. Hey, Nick. Nick Hankins, a very good, uh, uh, works for the Ross Company. Really? What's his name? Nick Hankins. Nick, yeah. He works for the Ross He Company. does some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yep. I'm going to take that gray stick up here. Oh, now we're picking out petals that you could just barely see them. This, you see the subtle. The strength of a painting isn't in the lights against the dark. The strength of a painting is in the subtleties. This is where the strength lies. The strength doesn't lie in screaming and hollering at people and putting lights against darks and saying, oh, look how great I am, blah, blah, blah. His strength is right here, guys. Though on television, <laughs> you need the lights and darks because that makes things pop. And I'm guilty of that myself when I was doing TV. But when you're doing stuff now that you're not playing to the camera that loves dark against light, it's a different world now, guys. Different world. One needs a little yellow green, or are those yellow green leaves coming over the bottom of that rose? Or is that part of the rose? The what? yellow green on that rose you just did. That one. Is that yellow green leaves coming over the top? Or this? is that part of the rose? That's part of the rose. But it doesn't have the yellow green. See the yellow, yellow. Does it look weird? Yeah. Now you're making me feel insecure. Well, it needs a little of that yellow green. Um, I guess on those bottom petals going into that gray shadow color. Ooh, and pink. Then it, and then it had a little pink over the top. You're making me feel insecure. <laughs> you're going to make me screw up. Oh, you're a critic. 
in front of everybody. Uh, you can criticize me when I do my live streams. No, you yell at me. Tell people they're going to be seeing us doing a lot more live streams. In the next yes, week. we're going to be doing a lot more me, stuff. Me and you, more live streams. Yes. Much more often. Yes. Yes. Because through the magic of streaming, oh, let's come way up to the streaming, you can reach so many people. And we can talk about stuff we're doing, too. Let's get up here. Am I painting off the camera? Maybe. Let's come up to the top. E oh, boom. And put some of these. Push down, pull up, ba boom, ba ding, ba da, ba do. Forget your uh, red rose by the hummingbird. Oh, I wouldn't. And you've got some dark behind the top of that rose too, before the red rose goes in. In yeah. here, thank you. And then your yellow buds. Be behind every successful person, artist, or whatever, there's a woman nagging you on. Okay. The dark comes over and then the red rose. Thank you. She has to do that because I'm dyslexic. I don't remember things. One time on TV, I was painting a bird and I left the tail off the bird. And I was saying goodbye to everybody and Kathy holds up a note. You left the tail off. And you only had five seconds. Oh, yeah. So I started getting you off. I ran. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the tail. Now, well, goodbye. <laughs> Those were the oh, days. Oh, Vivian Power in Ireland it says, holding my own host party with you. Host? A I guess maybe she has friends over or something. Really? Olivia. Our, is that who? what that means? Olivia Power, our certified teacher. And you're having folks over to watch and she's you? in Ireland. Really? Olivia is one of our very good uh, certified teachers in And Ireland. you're having hors d'oeuvres and stuff? And she says a host. Party. And I don't get to have any. I'm up here working my butt off for you. And I don't get any hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> We're just always working. Yeah. Mm. Well, why is that? I'm giving the, just the illusion of some leaves coming out. Take your time. You can host it online, she says. Take your time. Cad red medium. A little yellow. And I'm going to put that in. Don't forget your red bud. Very, yeah, very bright. That's too bright. No, it can't be. Put it in bright, because when you start blending stuff, It'll, it'll drop down. We're going to put a little green on here, on this side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then this little calyx coming up. Someone says you're breaking up and I'm the only one. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. Some people are, it's happening. Yeah, I'm breaking up. It's still coming through here? Yeah. Yes, you see, we need that little bit of yellow, but uh, it might be too yellow, yellow. So white is going to kill some of that yellow. And very, very dry. Uh, there it is. But you see, there's a lot of texture in buds. Sometimes I'll bring a bud in. I hate to cut them, but sometimes I'll bring a bud in. See that? See how that white just, it's still light. Knock that. Oh, we need that red. Let's block our guy in with crimson to start with. Remember, the Hummer will go in on another Another shoe. Yeah. So they're having a party while I'm here painting. That's kind of neat. 
there it is. That's going to be our little red flower. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but it's... Then we're going to take some Cad Red Pale, which has a little more orange in it. Very dry, because the dry sticks to the wet. Again, you see the brush turning and twisting. Oh, yeah. Let's put a little orange on that. Oh, hello. Hmm. <laughs> So I hope you guys try this. And we, you know, when you try to do this loose stuff, it's probably going to just turn out to be garbage. And I say that in a nice way. Because it's not easy. But don't, you see, folks get discouraged. What it takes to be successful at this, or I think anything you do, is tenacity, stick to itiveness, all that stuff. Yeah, years ago, when I was just doing little nice little paintings, and as I progressed and got older, I could have stopped learning and just stayed with what I was doing. But what fun is that? Uh, tell people that after you touch this up after the live stream, it will be for sale. If they're interested, they can email us. Which one? This one. How much? Uh, they can email us for a oh. price if they're interested, but you have to tell them it's for sale. Okay, you probably heard Kathy say, this painting's for sale if you want to email this. And as well as my daisy and green base yeah, the that one I did that the other day. Kathy did. We touched them up after the live stream and put more work into them. Kathy did a painting yesterday that is also for sale, so email us. If you're interested. That's just in the United States, guys. There's a little stem just kind of hanging out here. Maybe we should do something. It's just kind of there. I don't want to make these. But it needs a friend over here. Hmm. Yowie. I see we need more white over here. This painting's turning out pretty good. Mm-hmm. You never know. Now I'm going to, the light will be catching on the edge of some of these petals here in the, in the uh, middle tone here. White touch of pink. Look at that, just a touch of pink over there, see it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Say yellow, green, and yellow. Wow, work it in. I want to see some color dancing around the back. No, I never used to do this kind of stuff. I don't even know what's what started me doing all this. Well, Sedona helps. We live in Sedona, Arizona. It's very I'm spiritual. Mostly impressionistic painting here. Hmm? Mostly impressionistic painting here. Yeah. Mostly. And plein air. 
plein air. Yeah, a lot of plein air here. Impressionistic. Impressionistic. Joanne wants to know what size canvas you're using. This is a 16 by 20, but the one I show you, this guy is an 18 by 24. And it's a box canvas. And it's a box. Gallery. Yeah. But I'm not putting the bird in, as you Today. see. But I will, when this painting dries, I'll uh, have another show where we're going to put a birdie in and knock that down. Remember, paintings are never finished. They just stop at a good place. One of the worst things you can do is constantly rework and work. You walk away and you come back and you go, oh, it needs this. Oh, it needs that. It's a time to stop. And I'm guilty of that. I'll keep coming back and coming back until it looks crappy. <laughs> it's a little blue. Blue is a nice, cool color to use. You want to bring a detail out in the shadow, but you don't want to bring it out too much. Hmm. Mm-hmm. More stems. I like to bring stems over the top of stuff. These brushes come to a nice chisel so I can get a lot of nice skinny things going. Whew, 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 let's get another stem here. Do you always seal your paintings? If so, how long do you wait before you seal them? Seal them? In other words, varnish. Oh, not, varnish. Not very long. If they have to go to a gallery right away, not just a few weeks if they're dry. If they're dry. Here's an area. Can you mention the varnish? Maybe they can't. The, the what? The varnish. She wants to know how long. Or do you always seal your paintings? If so, how long do you wait? Yes, we always varnish. Our you can use a retouch, which is a thin varnish. But when you sell your paintings or they go to the gallery, they all have to be varnished. varnished. Well, tell, tell them that. No, okay, wait. How long do you wait? Oh. She wants to know. Well, you have to wait for the paintings to dry, which, but many paintings will dry on the surface. But there's still a little wet underneath. But we wait several weeks, but, if possible. Yeah, a couple of weeks, and then I, you, you can use a uh, Grumbacher makes a retouch varnish, which, which is, is a thin down uh, Demar, and, it's, it's and that puts that sep that keeps your painting uh, gives it a slight gloss. I, I'm, you see this area here? I want to show you something. Rather than have those little cutesy poozy little leaves coming out, watch what I'm going to take and destroy. You see? I'm going to tie it into here. Too. Keep the real dark under that rose, though. See the real dark? Right under the rose, how dark it is. Yeah. That's important. And I'm bringing that dark over to tie it into the rest of the painting. Now it's your darks that hold the whole painting together. Now you see, here's a dark, here. Notice how it comes up here and it, here's the same dark. It comes up here. So this dark is running up, hits that stem and comes on up and then slides off the stem into this door. Yes. Notice this curve, very important. It's, I use the S curve a lot, which is here, coming in here, turns this way, and then we're going to have another one that way. Mm. 
Okay, now here's something you want to avoid. You see this? This shape? And that shape, how it's making a kind of a, a repeating the shape you don't want to do. You see that happen, we're going to take it out. Things happen. Oh, I'm looking the whole thing over to see uh, what I might be missing, I think. Catherine, am I missing anything? I think I got most of it in there. That stem on the on the left, on the right, this one, is it attached under the leaf or anything? Is it just floating? It's just floating. Yeah. And you would have more stems coming down. You didn't really do it in the original, but with there. With all those flowers and buds, you would have more stems coming down. Well, I put a few more. <clears throat> Towels are important. You can get some neat little things happening. Um, your orbs, your larger orbs, <clears throat> you see on the bottom and on the right, those larger yeah. orbs, if they'll go in over that green area. Yeah, green my dirties. green in here, it, it'll go in, but it's lighter. They won't show us. They right. might not show because it's. But we'll put a few in here. You put some in with your finger sometimes. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can take your finger. Paint is non-toxic. Well, most. Yeah, well, it's a big one. Put a little light in here. Yeah, this adds a lot of energy to your painting. So if you get too many, just kind of, the big one I'm going to take out. Too many and just kind of hit it. They'll take their place in the background. Sometimes you need this small brush. Yeah. Yes. So the light would hit some of these edges. Yeah, it ain't over until it's over. Looks a little weird up in the top. Let's go up there. You can take a peek. Way up here. Those leaves can be lighter against that dark. See that string of, of light green leaves going mm -hmm. all the wiggle wiggle leaves going all the way up? Well, they hardly show on that one against the dark. They need to be brighter green. So it shows there's something up there. Yeah, yeah. just kind of let it fade out. Well, what do you think? That's good. Now remind people that if they came in late, they can always watch all our live streams on our Facebook page. In full, they can watch it afterwards when we post them. On our... Facebook, on this Facebook Yeah, this page. will be up on the Facebook page. You can um, watch the whole thing anytime. Any yeah, in case our, you came in late. Any of our live streams. Judy Craft. Love the painting! Yeah, email us if you want to buy it. But uh, again, it's going to dry and we'll and put, put the hummingbird in. We'll put our little yeah, hummer in there next, next week or so, whenever it dries. It looks done. Somebody's Alex Blackwell. Alexi. Alexi. Oh. She does beautiful jewelry. Olivia, beautiful Olivia jewelry. Power. Read a closet. We know all these people. I know. They're all over in Europe. No. Oh, I want to talk. Okay. Yeah.
Let's, let me push this back. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is a good shot. Right here where you can see both paintings. You see it? It's not exactly the same, but it's it's got the same. The main thing, the feeling. The same feeling. 